Hey, am I on? <laughs> oh, happy Sunday, everybody. It's Leslie the Little Plazic, also known as Zazu Plaz, here for my Sunday report in the woods, November 7th, 2021. <sighs> Starting to get, this is my really favorite season. Wow. Everything is brown, isn't it? Look at the woods around me. See? Beautiful browns and oranges. Ah, oh, a little nip in the air. Finally got my hat. Got my hat out. Got my glasses. I'm all set. Oh, how's everybody doing? Hope you had a good Halloween and everything. Yeah. I, um, ah. No, I've been thinking lately, and this is what this video is going to be about today. We're in Scorpio season, and Scorpio, which is my son, falls for me in my second house of my astrological chart. Now, the second house has to do a lot with uh, security, like uh, financial security. It has, has to do a lot with you know how you provide for yourself um, what you value you know what you spend your time doing and uh, and all that stuff and for me my son is conjunct Neptune there I got Neptune Neptune is like okay it's like I go in the bathroom in the morning to take a shower Nep that's me that's the Sun is your you know who you present to the world, right? Your purpose. I go in there, the purpose to take a shower. And my husband, inevitably, he goes, he finds out like when I'm gonna go take my shower. And he manages to get in there first. And he's a Pisces. So his, he gets out, everything is soaked. He's got this towel that's it's hanging on a clothes hanger because he hasn't put the hook up yet. He had to fix the wall where there was a big gouge in our bath, because our bathroom badly needs, in our relationship corner, badly needs to be renovated, right? And it's been, it's a, it's been 24 years since that bathroom has been updated. The toilet's fallen off the hinge, you know? <laughs> so anyway, he gets out of there and he's, I don't know how he does this. I think he takes the top bath towel in the shower with him because it's hanging on this hanger and it's like dripping wet. And all his clothes are like dripping, falling out of the closet on top of my head. And the floor is wet. The mirrors are wet. Everything is wet. And you can't see yourself in the mirror. So I'm like, that's like Neptune. That's like going in the bathroom after your husband is just, your Pisces husband has just gone in there. I have a grand trine in water. For anybody who knows astrology, grand trine is a good thing. It's like, it's like lucky, you know, but mine is in water, which means that I'm deluged. It, it has to do with emotions and, and you know, like wet water. Oh, oh man, I just, I just, I just yanked off my own microphone. I'm coming back. Don't worry. All right, I'm gonna put that on. See, so this, this is what happens. This is a very funny thing that happens. Okay. Oh, I can't get it to go back. Technical difficulties, folks. I'm gonna be. Oh. How can I do this? All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm back. So, yeah. So I've been thinking, you know, one, I, I've been looking through all my old photos. And, you know, I can look at them and I say, I did a report on that one. I did a report on that one, that one, that one. And the stuff that bugged me in those photos, it's, it's like, meh. You know, so I think getting out here and talking to myself in the woods is doing something. It is cleaning out 
you know, my my box of me- mental box of memories or my I don't know, it does something. Cuz I feel like I've accomplished something when I'm done with these videos. I hope you watch them. I hope you find them entertaining and uh, useful and that you share them. Please feel free to share and share. Zazu Plaz. I'm trying to build my Zazu Plaz community and to spread a little light. And uh, I was watching last night's SNL and they did a skit on with Dionne Warwick. And she actually was on the show, Dionne Warwick. And she started singing the song with the actress who plays her in the skit. Um, and it's, what the world needs now is love sweet love, or I'm not sure it goes that way, but bear with me. And I heard the song and something just like lit up and because I remember being a little kid and hearing that song and my, my heart just started just like expanding in my chest and I felt chills up my spine. That song, um, I remember hearing it as, as a child and it, and it really was it was very moving to me and um, it, it just wow rang true so I want to mention that I know it's an old schmaltzy song but it's true I think that what the world needs now is love and I don't mean like I guess whatever kind of love that lifts people up and gets them moving and makes them feel happy whatever love that is for you, you know. But I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to talk a little bit today about money and faith, because uh, I was reading today. Um, I always do the readings, because I, I find that the readings, with my Catholic background, um, they, they provide a framework for me to bounce off of and it and it kind of agrees with um, what I felt like talking about so I, there's something there I don't know um, but it's it's about you know God taking care of widows or the universe or spirit or whoever um, it said that you know the widow who gives her of two cents from her her one her, her you know Maybe she has 20 cents and she gives, or 10 cents and she gives two. You know, that's, God sees that. And then these people who have trillions, you know, who have $200, you know, and they give 10, it's not, well, I don't know what the math is here, but you know, those who, who give from their need, um, there will always be more. That's, that's the thing. With faith, you know that if you give, there will always be more, right? I tried explaining this to some people in my life, and they're like, no, you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta save it, you gotta have money for your future, you gotta, you know, work hard, and that's the only way you're gonna get money, and, well, there is a place for hard work, but I think that it's tied to emotion. And if I... <laughs> I've, I've wrestled with this my whole life. You know, it's, it, I've had jobs where I've struggled and I've struggled. And um, one, one little story kind of just occurred to me. Uh, about a year after I graduated from college, I, I had worked in, let's see, I was in about my second job. <laughs> um, yeah, because the first one, the first one, the market crashed. So I was only in that one about a year and then I, I moved on because, you know, I had to, I mean, I could. and. So I had this boyfriend at the time, and it's his birthday today, and I can't help but think, happy birthday, you know who you are, um, 11-7. So you know when, when 
you've had friends in your life. Even, you know, in your 20s. This was my college boyfriend, um, who is also a Scorpio. He's also Scorpio. And so we were two Scorpios together. You can imagine that. That was intense. But um, anyway, he's an accountant. And, well, he was an accountant. And through him, I got this job in an insurance company. And, you know, because I would hang out with him and his friends, and they all worked there. No, Connecticut, Hartford area, insurance. That, well, that was the thing back in the 80s. This was 87, 88. And so it was that on my 23rd birthday, 1988, I happened to be working at this accounting job. And it was like, they give me, it was a property accounting department. And they, they gave me all the crap because I, I was the newest member of the department. They gave me all the crap properties that had problems, like they were trying to collect, you know, on the property insurance or whatever it was. And it wasn't, you know, I had all these losing portfolios. And I found myself staying late, and it was my birthday. And uh, he had stopped by. I don't know, he, he had left a birthday card on my desk because he worked there too but in a more fortunate department and uh, I opened it this may end up in a future book and it was uh, this card and it was this woman in ratty clothes her socks are down around her ankles you know like that that lady in the Hallmark cards Now we got people. Yeah. So. I'm going to pause for a minute. Okay. We had people. Um, so. Yeah. So there's this woman. She looks beat down by life. She's, she's on the floor. There's like papers and books all on top, falling on top of her. And it said, ever have one of those careers? And I said, to this day I remember that card. And I don't know whether he meant it funny or not, but I was single, you know. I had just bought this condo right near where I worked. And uh, I was all alone, you know. And I was just going to go back to my lonely condo and, uh, you know, work on my birthday. And uh, another friend called me up and he said, oh, I'll take you out for pizza. So he ended up, a friend from my previous job, he ended up taking me out and I had a, I had a, he saved my birthday. And I'm not sure why that hurt me so much. You know, and maybe maybe my friend meant it as a kind of a, a light-hearted thing. But the way I was feeling at that moment, I didn't take it that way. And I've always thought of that, and how much that hurt me. And, uh, you know, I forgive. I forgive him for that, you know, because that wasn't the place for me. And it was my decision to go work there, really. And maybe he was just trying to help me out. So I'm cool with it, you know. But sometimes, sometimes um, you need a wake-up call, you know. And, uh, yeah, that's one of those things. You know, when I, when I was saying my vows at my wedding, you know, you say, for in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, poorer. I couldn't say poorer. It wouldn't, my lips wouldn't say poor, poor. I still can't say poor. It doesn't come out. Poor, less wealthy. <laughs> I can't say it. Um, I've, always, I've always been taken care of, though. I've always found a job. I feel a strong sense of, of protection because I have sun trying Jupiter. That's a trine is a fortunate 
aspect. And, you know, I, I, uh, I've never put much stock in material things. It's something my Taurus dad finds hard to understand. Uh, because for Taurians, you know, they're all about money and, you know, a nice car. You've got to have the best, right? So uh, I was uh, drawn to this movie last night. It was called Wild Child. Wild Child. It was about this girl who, um, she's, she's a rich girl, and her dad sends her, uh, you know, she, she's just doing all this, you know, wild stuff and throwing wild parties and throwing her new stepmother's clothes in the ocean and stuff like that. It was a recent movie, fairly recent, early 2000s maybe, 2007 or 8. So he sends her to England to this girl's boarding school. <laughs> and uh, she's, she's got a, it's kind of like Legally Blonde, you know, but she's, she's got a, she just changes her whole transforms her herself um, and she she actually kind of finds her you know she's wearing a uniform like like this see like my Catholic school uniform from 1977 now I just realized today that there see see I got my glasses on see if you could see that and I'm wearing my hair pretty much the same <laughs> There I am in my snazzy red uh, running sneakers. Those were all the rage back then. Little red sneakers, my knee socks, and my that's that sweater was really cool because it had these little um, it had like these little knob like wooden thingies that like you you put it through the buttonhole and you twist them. It had toggles. That's what it had. Toggles, very English. And I had my little Peter Pan collar and my little tie. Now, I didn't see anything wrong with this. I get up every day. Um, I wore glasses from the time I was 7 to 11. And today's 11-7. Seven. I've been wearing these glasses, and I find that, you know, it doesn't bother me anymore. I've gotten used to them, because I used to wear them. I used to wear really thick glasses. And they took up half your face. These are kind of cool, you know, and they're very light. Back then we had Coke bottle glasses, you know. So look at me, I'm at attention. I'm, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do there. But I, what I wanted more than anything was just to be left alone with my books. So, so uh, my dad was telling me that a few weeks ago, he says, he says, when you turn seven, no, well, my mom used to tell me this growing up, and my dad. Say, when you turn seven, you changed. And then when you turn 12, you changed again. So, seven was when I got the glasses. Eleven was when I got rid of them, or twelve, and got contacts. So, somewhere in between seven and eleven, those are, those are good numbers for me, I guess. Um, somewhere in between there, I, uh, you know, I did some of my, some of my learning. <sighs> Something happened. I'm only now thinking about it. But, you know, I just had a birthday. So it's like, you know, I, I wish, you know, I, I, I give advice all the time, right? Would I take it? <sighs> you would think. So I went, I, I had some money, and I said, I could just use a new blush. I think I, I think I talked about this last time. So I went home, and I tried the stuff, and it was, eh, it just, it was like $46 glorified sunscreen. And it, it felt goopy and gross on my skin. And I didn't even get a pink blush in this $39 set that they sold me. So I went back, I tried to return it. They wouldn't take it because I didn't have the receipt. But then I found, <laughs> okay, so my husband says, we, we tore the house apart. He says, I'll go in the trash and look for the receipt so you can return the makeup. And 
half an hour later, it comes back. It wasn't in the trash. I look in the little box where the makeup was. I had tucked the receipt in there. I said, oh, here it is. I thought he was going to throw the garbage over my head, throw me in the trash can, wheel me out to the curb. So, so I went back to the store and there's all these, you know, all these saleswomen in like black with long daggers, you know, trying to get their prey. Who's going to be the next sucker who's going to buy this stuff? I go in there, took my mask off a little bit and the smell from the perfume and all that stuff, it almost knocked me out. Like, ugh. got my money and got the heck out. This is why I shop online. Because, you know, when I'm home, I'm in my power seat, you know, with my bicycle and my laptop and my, you know. When I go up to the store, I'm me. I, I'm not, I, I'm not good holding on to my money in stores because they play music, you know, and I get going. Even the used clothes stores, I got all this stuff. I came home, I tried it on. I even, I, I said, you know, I'll give it a chance. I couldn't do it. I even washed it and I tried them on and I'm like, God, these pants, they don't, work for me. They don't fit me. They don't feel right. So back they go to the charity shop. You know. Uh, so, and then I've been giving away my mother's clothes. She had a nice cozy sort of maroon colored fleece zip up with a hood. Like, this is great. I'll try this. I put it on and I took the dog for a walk. And somehow the zipper, it did, it fit me too tight in the hips. So it kept creeping up on me as I moved. And the middle part bulged out like this. So it made me look pregnant. And I'm like, okay, so this isn't gonna work. My mom's clothing, apparently, it only looks good on you if you're seated in the car or standing still. Once you start moving, it doesn't work for me. I found, I've tested, I've road tested it, and I have found out that, you know, my mother and I are very different creatures. Um, that's the way it is, Mom, I tried. So her things will be finding a, a better home, maybe with my mother-in-law. I, I got a gift for my mother-in-law for my my husband came in with a big bag and I lifted it out and it was this like a it was <laughs> I thought it was a body bag. It's a it's one of those big fleece Christmas blankets with reindeer on it. It was white with little red loud reindeer and big green things. And I'm like, oh it's a blanket. Oh no, wait a minute. And you zip it up. It like zips up to here and then it stops. And it zips up to there and stops. Like, how the hell do I get into this thing? And once I get into it, I can't get out of it. I have to hop to the door if there was an emergency or a fire or something. And I'm like, oh, this is one of those things, you know, you, those sacks for a sack race where you, I don't, I don't want to be ungrateful. I really don't. But I, I just can't wear a, a I, I'm not the kind of person who sits around in a body bag. Please zip up reindeer body bag. It's just not, it's just not my, it's not my cup of tea, you know? And just like that mug she gave me with the, oh, and then she put, to happy birthday to my adopted daughter. I'm not your daughter. You can't adopt a 29-year-old woman, and I'm her daughter-in-law, right? Not daughter-in-love. 
I'm just your daughter-in-law. We, we have to have a chat, my mother-in-law and I, I think. We have to have a friendly chat so that I can stop the onslaught of Christmas things that I don't need and I don't want. I know it sounds terrible, but we're talking about material things today. And of course, this is where a lot of my material comes from, from my mother-in-law's shopping habits. She watches those QVC, you know, those TV shows about shopping. Yeah, she buys stuff. And then she gives it to us. <laughs> I to figure out what to do with it. So anyway, I want to say one more thing. So I'm taking, the, I'm taking my money and I'm putting it back into my Zazu business because that is for me where I can spread the most light, you know? Um, used to, it's, money is just the physical manifestation of how well you're using energy in the world. That's what I'm going to say. My kid, my youngest kid, he texts me. He and his friends and his girlfriend, they got in the car, just took a road trip to upstate New York. <sighs> they went to Woodstock. And he says, yeah, there's a bunch of old hippies up here, you know, <laughs> hanging out and, you know, playing, playing Bob Dylan music and stuff. Wearing tie dye. It's like my mother in law said, she said, you know what's really in style now is that tie dye stuff. Tie dye is. Okay. Yeah, it was in style when I was three. But never worked for me. So, anyway, stay tuned for next week and see what I managed, figured out what to do with the, with the reindeer body bag. Somebody, somebody could use it. Somebody who's chilly. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go and warm up, have something hot to drink, get out of the woods here. Oh, until next week, Zazu Plaz, signing out. Take care. Stay warm.